What's up everyone, it's your girl Skane Spider, coming at you with a new crochet pattern and tutorial. <laughs> I cannot do it. <laughs> nope. Nope. I feel ridiculous. I am not cut out to be a game streamer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nope. I'm out. I'm out. Let's hop on into creative mode because today we're going to be making a Minecraft frog. A couple of weeks ago I was scrolling through the news on my phone, as you do, and I came across an article about a new mob that was going to be introduced into Minecraft, which just happened to be these little guys. And as soon as I saw them, I was like, where is my crochet hook and yarn? I need to make one immediately and then I need to make six more in different colours. <laughs> That's why this little guy is blue. I know they haven't introduced a blue frog, but I wanted a blue frog, so I made a blue frog. And that is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making our own Minecraft frog. So if that's something that you would enjoy, grab your hooks and let's get started. To make a Minecraft frog, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, stuffing, and eight ply yarn in the colors of cream, brown, black, and a color of your choice, but you're going to need two shades of this color, a lighter shade and a darker shade. For this pattern, we have some pieces that are crocheted in the round and others that are crocheted in rows. What we're going to do is for all the pieces that are crocheted in rows, and that is going to be the front and back feet and the eyes, we're going to crochet them first because we're going to block them and then while they're setting, we can go on and crochet all the other pieces. We're going to begin with the eye and we start that with our cream yarn. Using your 3.5 millimeter hook, we are going to make a slip knot and then chain three. We're going to start in the second chain from the hook and do a single crochet. And after this first single crochet, we should only have one chain left. We're going to single crochet into that as well. So row one is just two single crochet. For row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're also going to do two single crochet. However, at the end of this row, we're going to change to our brown yarn. We're going to start with the first single crochet, number one. But on the second, we will change color. Go into that second single crochet, yarn over and pull through until you have two loops on your hook. And now we're just going to set this down and bring in our brown yarn. Line up the end of your brown yarn behind your hook. And then what we're going to do is yarn over in the brown, finish the single crochet in that. And then we're going to snip away this cream yarn because we don't need it in this piece any longer. Both rounds three and four are also chain one, turn your work and two single crochet. At the end of row four, we're going to be changing color to the black. And I'm also in this row, row three, going to be working over these two ends to secure them. So chain one, I'm going to turn my work, go into the stitch, working over these two ends, one single crochet, oops, that didn't work. That's better. Second single crochet, then I'm going to chain and turn. I'm going to do the first single crochet of row four. But with the second, I'm going to change color the same way I've done previously. Go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. So I have two loops on my hook. Bring in my black yarn, line that up behind the hook, yarn over with the black, pull through the two loops on my hook and then I can get rid of the brown. These scissors aren't very sharp. Rows five through to eight are going to be chain one, turn your work and two single crochet. And in this row, which is row five, I am also going to be working over these two ends. So one and two. When you've finished row eight, what you can do is leave a long tail for sewing if you would like to sew these pieces off. 
However, what I'm going to be doing is gluing them on just because I think it looks better in this case. So I'm only going to be cutting a short tail that I can weave in. These ends that I've already worked over, I'm just going to snip off the excess yarn. But if you think they need to be secured a little bit more, you can weave them in through the backs of your stitches as well. And then I'm just going to grab my needle. And I'll be weaving both of these ends, both the slip knot and the end we finished with, in through the backs of the stitches. And that's how you make the eye. You're going to need to make two. And then when that's done, we're going to go on to crochet the front toes. And for that, I'm going to need my light blue yarn. I'm going to be crocheting the bulk of the frog in this lighter blue. And to begin the front toes or the feet, we're going to make a slip knot and then chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet four back down the chain. Two, three, and four. For row two, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and do four single crochet. For row three, we're going to begin by chaining three. One, two, and three. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do one single crochet. Then the second single crochet of row three should still be in that chain three space we made. So this is actually going to be the very first chain, two. Once we've done those first two single crochet, we're going to be working across the four stitches of the rows that we've already done. One, two, three, and four. So all up we have six stitches. We did two across the chain three space that we made and then four across the rows. Row four is going to be the same as row three. We're going to begin by chaining three one two three and then we're going to do six single crochet starting in the second chain from the hook one and two single crochet across the chain and then one two three and four single crochet across the previous row. At the end of row four, we should again have six single crochet that we just worked, but this time we should have two free stitches at the end here, and we're not going to work into those. We're just going to leave those alone. For rows five and six of the front toes, we're going to chain one this time, just one, and do four single crochet across. One, two, three and then row six is the same chain one one two three and there we go four for the feet you're going to need to leave a tail for sewing pull up with your hook and then we're going to make two of these as well and when you've done that, we're going to go on to the back toes or the back feet. For those, I'm still using my light blue yarn and 3.5 millimeter hook. And this time we begin with a slip knot and chaining seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Starting in the second chain of the hook, we're going to do six single crochet for row one. Row two is chain one, turn your work, and six single crochet. Mm -hmm. 
Rows three, four, and five are each chain one, turn your work, and four single crochet. Two, three, and four. And that means when you've done row three, you should have four single crochet that you've just created and two free single crochet. These last two crochet, we're not going to be working into those. Instead, continue on to rows four and five, which again are chain one, turn your work, and four single crochet. Row six begins by chaining three, one, two, and three. And then we're going to do six single crochet. Like we did in the front foot, we're going to begin by doing the first two single crochet across the chain. One and two. And then our next four single crochet are going to be across the row that we've done previously. Both rows seven and eight are chain one, turn your work and four single crochet. One, two, three, and four and like with earlier in this foot we're going to leave the two stitches on the end unworked so chain one let me try that again chain one turn your work and do the four single crochet for row eight one two three and four Row eight is the final row for our back foot. So again, we're going to cut a tail for sewing. You will need to make two of these pieces as well. And then when you have all your little pieces that were crocheted in rows, so we should have two back feet, two front feet, and two eyes. We're going to block these to stop this curling from happening. This step isn't strictly necessary. You don't have to do that, but I just think it gives the pieces a much nicer finish. So we'll go ahead and block those now and then we'll come back here and crochet the rest of the limbs and the body. In order to block all our little pieces worked in rows, we're going to need a few things. You're going to need something that you can put the pieces on. I'm going to be using an old towel, but you could also use some fabric or a piece of foam. You're also going to need either a bowl or a cup with a little bit of water in it, a paintbrush, some pins and some Mod Podge or craft glue, a glue that dries clear. What we're going to do is take our craft glue or our Mod Podge. And I'll move these out of the way for now. And you're just going to scoop out a little bit, or if you've got one of those squeezy bottles, you can just squeeze in a little bit into your water. And then you're just going to mix that in until it dissolves. If you don't have Mod Podge or craft glue, you can do this with just water. So do all these steps, just don't add the glue in. It can still work. I just find the ends tend to curl a little bit still when you just use water. The craft glue does help. After you've mixed that glue through, let's just move this over a little bit. You're going to grab your pins and all the little pieces. So I've got my front legs. eyes and the back legs and then what we're going to do is grab some pin and then just pin them so they're nice and square and flat you want the corners to be square and you want the piece to rest nice and flush against your towel or your foam or whatever it is you're using. Now that they're all pinned in place, we're going to go on to the next step. But before we do, if you want to be really precise with your sizing, you can whip out your tape measure and measure your pieces to make sure each one is the same size. But 
I can't be bothered with that. I'm just going to eyeball it. So when your pieces are down, we're going to grab our water glue mixture and our paintbrush. And we're just going to apply that to our pieces. So you're just going to dab it on with your paintbrush. And I'm just going to make sure that everything's nicely covered. And that should just about do it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is set this aside to dry. I usually give it about 24 hours, but that's going to depend on a number of factors. For example, I did my prototype piece and we've had a run of humid days here in Melbourne and they took almost three days to dry. So how long that's going to take is really going to depend on where you are and what sort of conditions you're dealing with. But just wait until they're dry. And while they're doing that, we're going to go on to crochet all the rest of our pieces. The next piece we're going to make is the mouth chin piece. And this is also worked in rows, but for this one, we don't need to block it because the entire piece is going to be sewn down. So it will end up resting flat against the body. If you want to, you can block it as well, but you really don't need to, there's not much point. So what we're going to do is start off with a slip knot, and this time we're going to chain 26. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do 25 single crochet back down the chain for row one. Rows two through to eight are each going to be chain one, turn your work and 25 single crochet. For the next few rows, what we're going to need is our darker yarn shade. So in the materials list, I said to have a shade of color of your choosing, a lighter and a darker version. For the body, I'm using the lighter shade of blue, but for this part, I'm going to need my dark blue. I'm not going to use it just yet. I'm just going to have it handy. For row number nine, what we're going to do is begin by chaining one and turning our work. And then we're going to do 10 single crochet in the crate. I've done nine single crochet so far, and on the 10th single crochet, we're going to change color. And we're going to change color in the same manner we did for the eyes earlier. Go into the 10th stitch, yarn over and pull through, and you should have two loops on your hook now. We're going to bring in our darker color, and just line that yarn up behind your hook. Yarn over in this darker color and pull through the two loops on your hook. We're going to do five single crochet in our new color and we're going to swap colors back to the cream after that fifth single crochet. I'm also going to be working over both of the blue end to secure it and the cream end to carry it with me so I can change color back after that fifth single crochet. Four, and then on the fifth single crochet, I'm going to change color, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. I'm going to drop the blue yarn. I'm going to pick up my cream yarn and I'm going to finish the single crochet in that. And I'm just going to finish row nine by doing 10 single crochet with my cream yarn. Row 10 is going to be the same as row nine. We're going to chain one, turn our work, do 10 single crochet in the cream, five single crochet in the darker yarn, and then 10 single crochet in the cream. I've just changed back to my cream yarn to do my final 10 single crochet of row 10. But what I'm going to do at this point is actually work over my blue yarn until the end of the row. And the reason I'm doing this is because my next row, which will be row 11, actually uses the blue yarn. And rather than cutting it and then reattaching it, I'm just going to work over it to carry it to the end. Up 
After doing nine single crochet, I'm going to switch colors back to my darker color, go into the 10th stitch that we need to do cream for, go into the last stitch, yarn over, pull through so you have two loops on your hook, drop the cream yarn, pick up your darker color and then just finish the stitch in that color. I'm going to cut a short tail for the cream. This just needs to be long enough that I'll be able to work over it in the next row. And we can get rid of that now. For row 11, what we're going to do is chain one, turn our work, and then do 10 single crochet in the darker color. And again, I'm working over this cream end. For row 12, we're going to chain one, turn work, and do 10 single crochet, still working with our darker yarn. At this point, we've finished this side of the mouth, so we're just going to cut a short tail that we can weave in later on, pull up with your hook, and then we're going to reinsert our hook back into stitch 16 of row 10. Stitch 16 is the first cream one here after the five blue stitches that we did. So I'm going to insert my hook there. I'm going to bring in my darker yarn, line it up behind my hook, I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, and then I'm going to slip stitch to join. This slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch in our row, so the first single crochet of what is row 11 still, so we did row 11 and 12 here, but we need to repeat those on this side. So I'm going to go back into that same stitch and do my first single crochet. And like with the other side here, both rows 11 and 12 are each 10 single crochet. At the end of row 11, just chain one, turn your work before you do the next row of single crochet. When you finish row 12 on the second side, you're going to cut a tail that is long enough that you'll be able to sew on all of the blue stitches. When we get to the assembly stage, what I plan to do is sew on my blue stitches using the blue yarn, and then I'm going to attach some cream yarn to sew on the cream stitches. You don't have to do this. If you would like, you can cut an extra long tail and just sew the entire piece on with your darker yarn. However, I just prefer to match up my colors when sewing, just in case I end up with like darker colors on the side here. I don't, I don't like the look of that. So I just plan to stick with the cream yarn to avoid that. I'm going to cut off all my little excess tails here. This one I need to weave in, but I'll cut off the rest. And I'll have to weave in that one too, but we'll do that at the assembly stage. Like I mentioned earlier, you can block this piece if you want, but it's even less necessary with this piece than it is for the others because this entire piece is just going to be sewn onto the, onto the body. But that's really up to you. If you want to block it, you can. The next pieces that we're going to make are going to be the legs. We're going to make a front leg and a back leg. We're going to begin with the front leg and we're going to do this in rounds. Round number one for the front leg is four single crochet in a magic circle. And four. Now for both of the leg pieces, the front leg and the back leg, as well as the body piece, we're going to be use three single crochet to increase rather than the sort of traditional two single crochet increase. In the written pattern down the bottom here, that's going to be abbreviated to three SC ISS, which stands for three single crochet, three SE. ISS means in same stitch. I use this to differentiate between the INC increase. So I know that I need to do three single crochet to increase rather than just two. So round number two of the front leg is going to be four, three single crochet increases. That means three single crochet in the same stitch four times. You're going to go into the first stitch and do one single crochet. Go into that same stitch again, do a second single crochet, and then go into that same stitch once more for three single crochet. We're going to do this three more times. So into the next stitch, one, 
two and three all in the same stitch. The third stitch, one, two, and three. And then finally the fourth stitch, one, two, and three all in the same stitch. I'm going to grab my stitch marker at this point. And then round three is going to be two single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch repeated four times. Starting off with one stitch marker in and then two single crochet. In the next stitch, putting three single crochet all in the same stitch. One, two, and three. Repeat that pattern again. One, two single crochet, and then three single crochet in the same stitch. One, two, three. And we're going to repeat that same pattern twice more. Two single crochet, followed by three single crochet in the same stitch. For round four, we're going to start off with three single crochet. One, two, and then three. In the next stitch, we're going to put three single crochet in the same stitch. One, back into the same stitch, two, back in again for three. And then we're going to repeat four single crochet three single crochet in the same stitch three times. When you've done that final three single crochet in the same stitch, we should have one stitch left in our round and we're just going to pop a single crochet into that. At the end of round four, we should now have 28 stitches in total in our round and round five is going to be 28 single crochet but we're working in the back loop only. The back loop is the part of the stitch that's furthest away from you. Each individual stitch looks like a little V shape and the part of the V that's at the back here that's the back loop and that is where we're going to be working for round 28. No, we're doing 28 single crochet, it's round five. Both rounds six and seven are just 28 single crochet. And this time we're going back to working in both loops. So we're no longer working in just the back loop. When you've completed round seven, just slip stitch to finish off. And we're going to need to leave a tail for sewing. And then you want to make a second front leg. But before we go on to crocheting the back legs, what you're going to do is crochet the base of the eye. And the base of the eye looks like this. We're using the exact same pattern. So we're crocheting out for four rounds then working in the back loop for round five. However, for the front legs, which is the smaller piece, we're crocheting down for rounds six and seven. To crochet the eye base, you're going to crochet down for rounds six through to 10. As usual, there will be timestamps down in the description for each of the pieces. So you can go back and follow the pattern for these again if you need to. All you need to do is when you get to the final round, so for this one, it was round six and seven, all you need to do for the eye base is add a couple of additional rounds until you get to round 10. That's the only difference between these two pieces. Once you've crocheted all of those, we're going to go on and crochet the back legs. Now the back legs are also worked in the round, but rather than starting with a magic circle, we're going to begin with a chain and that's going to give us our more rectangle shape. So we're going to use our 3.5 millimeter hooks again. We're going to grab our body color yarn. And this time we're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. 
Round one is going to be one single crochet starting in the second chain from the hook. In the next stitch, we're going to put three single crochet all in the same stitch. One, two, and three. My hook's got the squeakies again today. I'll have to give it a clean. At this point, we're going to rotate our work. We're not turning it like we did with the rows. We're just rotating it around so we can work down the other side of the chain here. And we're going to repeat what we've just done. We're going to do one single crochet in the first chain and then three single crochet in the same stitch in the next one. One, two, and three. For row two, we're going to work directly back into that first single crochet we made in round one. And this time we're going to start with two single crochet. Stitch mark in. And then two. And for this round, we're going to do two, three single crochets in the same stitch in a row. That means in the next stitch, we're going to put three single crochet all in the same stitch. One, two, and three. And then in the next stitch, we're going to do the same thing. One, back into the same stitch. There we go, for two, back into the same stitch for three. And we're going to just repeat that pattern again. We're going to do two single crochet, one and two, three single crochet in the next stitch, one, two, and three. And then in what should be the final stitch of our round, three single crochet all in that stitch, one, two, and three. Round three is going to begin with three single crochet, one, Oh, that was good. One, two, and three. In the next stitch, we're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch. Two, three. Followed by two single crochet. One, and two. Three single crochet in the next stitch. One, two and three all in the same stitch then we're going to do four single crochet across one two three and four then another three single crochet in the same stitch one two and three all together. Two more single crochet, one and two. In the next stitch, we're going to do our final three single crochet in the same stitch. One, two, and three. And after all of that, we should have one stitch left in our round. And we're just going to single crochet into that. Round four begins with four single crochet two, three, and four. Then we're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch. One, two, and three. Then four single crochet. Two, three, and four. Another three single crochet in the same stitch two and three followed by six single crochet another three single crochet in the same stitch two and three four single crochet oops i need to do that again Four single crochet, one, two, three, and four. Our final three single crochet in the same stitch, one, 
two and three. And then to finish, two single crochet. And two. At the end of round four, we should have 32 stitches in total. And then round five, like the front leg, is going to be worked in the back loop only. And that means round five is going to be 32 single crochet worked entirely into the back loop. From here we're going to go back to working in both loops and rounds six through to nine are each going to be 32 single crochet. When you finish round nine, just leave a tail for sewing. And then we can go on to crochet the final piece. The last piece that we need to crochet is the body. And we're going to do that very similar to how we did the hind legs or the back legs. We're going to begin by creating a chain and then working in the round from there. We're going to start round number one by making a slip knot and then chaining five. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do three single crochet and then in the last chain, three single crochet in the same stitch. We're then going to rotate our work and work back down the other side of the chain and we're going to crochet the same pattern three single crochet and then in the last chain three single crochet in the same round two is going to be four single crochet if I can get my hook in there four then we're going to do two three single crochet in the same stitches so in the next stitch we're going to do one two and three single crochet all in the same stitch and we're doing the same in the stitch after that one two and three we're going to repeat that again four single crochet and then three single crochet in the same stitch twice Round three begins with five single crochet, and then we're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch, then two single crochet, another three single crochet in the same stitch, six single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, two single crochet, our final three single crochet in the same stitch, and then we're going to finish off the round with one single crochet. Round four is six single crochet followed by a three single crochet in the same stitch, then four single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, eight single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, four single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, and then finish the round with two single crochet. Round five starts with seven single crochet, then three single crochet in the same stitch, six single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 10 single crochet, another three single crochet in the same stitch, six single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, and then finally three single crochet to finish. Round six starts with eight single crochet, then we're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch, eight single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 12 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, eight single crochet, our final three single crochet in the same stitch, and then finish off with four single crochet.
Round seven begins with a nine single crochet, then we're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch, 10 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 14 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 10 single crochet, our final three single crochet in the same stitch, and then five single crochet to finish off. For round eight, begin with 10 single crochet and then three single crochet in the same stitch, 12 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 16 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 12 single crochet, our last three single crochet in the same stitch, and for the end of the round, six single crochet. Round nine starts with 11 single crochet, then we're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch, 14 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 18 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 14 single crochet, our last three single crochet in the same stitch, and then finish up with seven single crochet. Round number 10 is going to be our final increase round. We're going to start off with 12 single crochet and then three single crochet in the same stitch, 16 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 20 single crochet, three single crochet in the same stitch, 16 single crochet, the final three single crochet in the same stitch, and then finally eight single crochet to finish off. At the end of round 10 and all that increasing, we should have 84 stitches total in our round. The next round, round 11, is going to be worked in the back loop only. And like we said in the legs, the back loop is the part of the stitch that's furthest away from you. And for round 11, we're just going to do 84 single crochet in the back loop only. After round 11, we're going back to working in both loops again, and rounds 12 all the way through to 28 are each going to be 84 single crochet. After all that, we're going to go on to round 29, which is 84 single crochet worked in the back loop only. From round 30 onwards, we're going to begin our decrease rounds. And what we're going to be using instead of the usual invisible decrease is single crochet three together and we'll go over how to do that in a moment, but first we need to start round 30 with 17 single crochet. After making those 17 single crochet, we're then going to single crochet three together, and this is going to be how we decrease. We're going to go into the next stitch, which is stitch 18, yarn over and pull through and at this point we have two loops on our hook one two we're then going to go into the stitch after that stitch 19 and again yarn over and pull through and now we should have three loops on our hook and then we're going to go through the next stitch which is stitch 20 so we've gone across three stitches at this point we're again going to yarn over and pull through and now we should have four loops on our hook we're going to yarn over for a final time and then pull through all four of those loops. And that's how you single crochet three together. This is what we're going to be using for the rest of our decrease rounds. But for now, we're just going to finish off round 30. And we're going to do that by doing 15 more single crochet. And 
15. After that 15th single crochet, we're going to make another single crochet three together. Go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. So you have two loops on your hook. Go into the stitch after that, yarn over, pull through. So we have three loops on our hook. Go into the stitch after that, yarn over, pull through. And at this point we have four loops on our hook. Yarn over for a final time and pull, and pull through all four loops. After that second single crochet three together, we're then going to do 21 single crochet. After that 21st single crochet, we're going to do another single crochet three together. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, have two loops on your hook, go into the stitch after that, yarn over, pull through, have three loops on your hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through and four loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over for a final time and pull through all four loops. After the third single crochet three together, we're then going to do 15 single crochet. And then after that, we're going to do our final single crochet three together of the round. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops. Into the stitch after that, yarn over, pull through with three loops. And then into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and finally you'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over for a final time and pull through all four loops. After this last single crochet three together that we've done, we should have four stitches left in our round. And we're just going to single crochet into each of those. Two, three, and four. For the rest of our rounds, we are going to be using the single crochet three together as a decrease. Going forward, if I accidentally say decrease instead of single crochet three together, just know I do mean for this portion, single crochet three together. And also it'll be down in the written pattern as well. So we're going to continue with round 31, which begins with 16 single crochet, then a single crochet three together, 13 single crochet, another single crochet three together, 19 single crochet, single crochet three together, 13 single crochet, single crochet three together, and then to finish the round, three single crochet. Round 32 begins with 15 single crochet, and then we're going to single crochet three together. Then 11 single crochet, single crochet three together, 17 single crochet, single crochet three together, 11 single crochet, our final single crochet three together, and then two single crochet to finish. Round 33 begins with 14 single crochet, then a single crochet three together, nine single crochet, single crochet three together, 15 single crochet, single crochet three together, nine single crochet, our final single crochet three together, and we're going to finish the round with just one single crochet. Round 34 is 13 single crochet, then single crochet three together, seven single crochet, single crochet three together, 13 single crochet, single crochet three together, seven single crochet, and then this time we're going to finish on our final single crochet three together. Before we go on to crochet round 35, what we're going to do is shift the start slash end of our round. The last few rounds that we've done, the last few decrease rounds, we've been stacking our decrease or our single crochet three togethers in each of the corners. But in round 34, which is the round we just finished, we finished with our single crochet three together. 
So to prevent crossing over the start end of our round where our stitch marker is, because that can end up getting a little bit confusing, it's doable, but it can be confusing. What we're then, what we're instead going to do is just shift our round. So what I'm going to do in the written pattern is I'm going to call this round 34.5, round 34 and a half. It's sort of an in-between round. And all we're going to do is from our last single crochet three together, which was the end of round 34, we're going to crochet six single crochet. And six. In this six single crochet, the last one we've made, that is where we're going to pop our stitch marker back in. So this stitch now becomes the start of our round. I always put my stitch marker in the first single crochet of my round and we're going to continue working from here. This just leaves us room to continue doing our single crochet three together in the corners. We're going to start off round 35 with seven single crochet, but the first single crochet of that seven is going to be the one where our stitch marker already is. So the six single crochet that we did from round 34.5 is now the start slash end of our round and the first stitch of round 35. So we've done one, that's where our stitch marker is. We're going to do two, And seven and I'm just going to double check that starting from where my stitch mark is one two three four five six and seven okay the rest of round 35 is going to be single crochet three together five single crochet single crochet three together 11 single crochet single crochet three together five single crochet our final single crochet three together and then we're going to finish round 35 with four single crochet Round 36 is six single crochet, single crochet, three together, three single crochet, single crochet, three together, nine single crochet, single crochet, three together, three single crochet, single crochet, three together, and then finally three single crochet. After round 36, we're going to add the stuffing to the body and I'm just going to take out my hook and secure the end. What you want to do is press the top down onto a firm flat surface. So we're going to do that first. Then grab your stuffing. We're going to begin stuffing this piece by putting the stuffing in the corners first. and. We want to be careful not to overstuff. You're better off understuffing this piece than overstuffing. And that's going to go for all the limbs as well. Because if you put too much stuffing in this body, it's going to lose its rectangular shape. So we're just going to add a little bit at a time. And I like to start in the corners so I can push those out and keep them nice and square. And as you continue to add more and more stuffing, keep that top of your piece pressed flat against the firm surface because that's going to stop the top from bulging out. You want it to be as flat as possible. So I'm going to stop adding stuffing about there. Like I said before, you are better off understuffing this piece than overstuffing it. And just make sure it maintains its shape and then the flat and that the top is relatively flat. Round 37 is going to be our final round. We're going to start with five single crochet, then single crochet three together, one single crochet, single crochet three together, seven single crochet, single crochet three together one single crochet, our final single crochet three together, and we're going to finish the round with two single crochet. Mm -hmm. 
When round 37 is done, we're going to cut a tail and this needs to be fairly long because we're going to sew this final round together. So pull up with your hook. Take out your stitch marker and grab your needle. We're going to thread the needle with the tail end that we've just cut. And then what we're going to do is pinch the final round together and we should have nine stitches on this side and nine stitches on this side because at the end of round 37 we had 18 stitches total in our round. All we're going to do is sew the two sides together for nine stitches. When you're finished, we're just going to weave this end in through the... And with that done, we can go on to assembling our frogs. The first piece I'm going to attach is going to be the mouth, but before I do that, I want to weave in my two ends. When you've weaved in those ends, we're going to put the mouth on the front of the face. The five single crochet that we did in the darker color in the middle, that should be centered at the front of the head here. Get out the way. There we go. We're going to center that there and the bottom of the piece should line up with those front loops from when we worked in the back loop only in round I don't remember what that was, round 30-ish, I think. <laughs> anyway, line it up with those front loops. And the sides of the mouth should just wrap around to the sides of the body. So they're a little bit on the side there. What you're going to do is pin this piece in place. And before you sew this piece on, just make sure that it roughly lines up. So if you look at it from the top, the two bits that we're folded around the side, they should be about in line. We don't want one down here and one up there. It should form one line straight across and that's fairly even. So I'm going to sew this on. I'm going to begin by sewing on the blue stitches and I'm going to use my blue yarn for that. And then I'm going to bring in another strand of yarn to sew on the cream, just because I prefer to do it in the same colors. I am going to, after I thread my needle, move this end, so this end of my yarn, from the point that it's at in the middle here to the start of the blue stitches here. Because otherwise I'm going to miss all of these stitches when I begin sewing and I'll have to come back anyway. So I'm just going to go into the body, push my needle through until it emerges out of the stitch below where the blue stitches start. And from here, I'm going to sew on up the side, across the top, and then all the way along until all the blue stitches are sewn on. When you finish sewing on the dark stitches, we're just going to weave in the end. And then I'm going to use a length of the cream yarn to sew on the rest of my stitches. If you want to continue to use the darker color to sew on the rest of your, your stitches, you can do that. I just prefer using the same color. So what I'm going to do is begin sewing from where I left off with the dark stitches, but I'm going to insert my needle on this side because this is where we're going to end. I'm going to insert my needle here and I'm going to push it through the body across to the stitch that I need to start from. So I'm just going to emerge from beneath the first cream stitch here. And then I'm going to pull on this yarn until just a short tail is left hanging outside the, bod the body here. This part just needs to be long enough that you can tie it off later. 
and then we're going to begin sewing. So we're going to start from where we left off and then just continue down the side of the mouth all the way across the bottom and then up the other side. As you sew these first few stitches, just make sure that that tail doesn't pull through. It should be okay, but just keep an eye on it anyway. When you finish sewing on the cream stitches, you're going to push your needle out through the original stitch that we worked into where our tail is at the moment. And you want to make sure you go out the same stitch. All you're going to do then is tie these two ends off to secure them. And we're going to cut off the excess yarn and then just push this knot back into the body. Next we're going to sew on the front legs and the front legs are the shorter square pieces. We're going to put those on the side of the body closer to the front and the front about third of the front leg rests over the mouth. So if I pop mine there, you can see that's where it's going to go. And like with the mouthpiece, the bottom of the front leg is going to rest just above these exposed front loops. With all these pieces, the front legs, the back legs, and the eye base that we're going to put on later, you want to stuff those lightly as well. Like with the body, you want just enough stuffing that you can keep their shape. You don't want to overdo it. I'm going to grab my stuffing again and just put in a little bit. And then I'm going to pin them in place. When you pin them, I would recommend putting a pin in each corner. So you want to keep pinch the corner to keep it square and then place the pin in. When you've got the first front leg in position, we're then going to pin the second leg to the body. So we're going to flip it over Add our stuffing, probably a bit too much. And I'm going to try and line these up so they're in the same position on each side of the body. And then we're just going to repeat the process of pinning that in place. When both front legs are pinned on, we're going to sew each of them on. When you finish sewing on the front legs, just weave in your end like we did with the mouthpiece. After the front legs, we're going to sew on the back legs and we're going to do that in the same way that we did the front legs. So grab your back leg pieces. We're going to add our little bit of stuffing. And then we're going to set them on the body too. Once more, the bottom of the piece is going to line up with these exposed front loops at the bottom here and the back of the front leg should be in line with the back of the side here so just before what is sort of the corner and if you line all that up right the back leg should sit about two or three stitches away from the front leg so we're just going to pin this one in place and then i'm going to do the same on the second leg When you're pinning the legs, you should again have them lined up along the bottom and the side, but the top of the back leg will sit higher than the front leg because these are a little bit taller. So as you can see here, my back leg is sitting about two rounds up from the front leg. When you've pinned both back legs in place, we're going to sew them on too.
With the back legs finished, we're then going to sew on the eye bases, which are the taller square pieces. We're going to sit those towards the front of the head, about two rounds back from the exposed back loops here. And each of the sides on the outside are going to sit against the exposed back loops too. So on the eye here, that would be this side, and this eye is going to sit against the back loops on this side. And we're going to do the same thing that we've done for both the front legs and the back legs. We're going to add a little bit of stuffing, just enough to maintain the shape. We're going to pin them in place, and then we're going to sew them on. When all those six pieces have been sewn on, we're then going to grab the pieces that we blocked earlier. So that's going to be our back legs, our front legs and our eyes and we're just going to unstick or unpin, not unstick, <laughs> unpin those. For both the eye pieces, I already dealt with the ends earlier, so I'm not going to worry about those for now. But with each of the feet slash toe pieces, we're going to weave in our ends. And the end that we need to weave in is the slip knot end. So where we finish the piece and we left a tail for sewing, that end we're going to leave alone. It's the opposite end, which for the back feet is this end here, the longer bit. And we're going to weave in the slip knot end. And I'll do that for both pieces. And once we've done that for the back feet, we're going to do that for the front feet as well. And once again, we're weaving in the slip knot end, not the end where we left our tail for sewing. And when that's done, we're going to pin and sew the feet onto our frog. And I've laid the pieces out in the order that they go in. So this is the front leg here, back leg, opposite back leg and the other front leg. So with the back pieces, the longer portion here is the front, so it's wider than the top here. And the two little bits that stick out on the side, they should be on the outside of the piece. As you can see, we've got them both sitting in the way that they need to be sewn on at the moment. And with the front toes, there are two bits that stick out on either side. The one that is closest to the start of the piece, where we began and where we just weaved in our slip knot end, that is the piece that should sit closest to the front. So that is how we're going to sew our toes on. I'm going to sew them on just across the top here, but if you would prefer, you can sew on more than that. And all we're going to do is grab our frog, flip it over, and I'm just going to pin them all in place. And I would recommend pinning them all and then having a look at how they're all sitting first and then sewing. So at least that way, if you need to adjust them at all, you can do that before you make any, any permanent changes. Now that I've got them all pinned in place, I'm going to flip it over and that looks okay to me. So I'm going to go ahead and sew mine on. And the reason I'm not telling you an exact round or exactly where to place the feet is because it's going to change a little bit depending on the positioning of your back legs. So depending on how you sewed them on, how much stuffing you added, that yours are probably going to be a little bit different to mine and that's going to change the position of your feet. So just eyeball it and place them, actually I might move this one back a little bit, and place them wherever you think looks best. And when they are in that position, then sew them all on. The final thing that we need to do is to attach the eyes. I'm going to be gluing my eyes on just because I think it looks better, but if you would prefer, you can sew them on. 
We're going to line up the eyes with the base that we've already sewn to the head and the cream part is going to sit on the front right up against the inner corner here. And then the rest of the eye is going to run along the front and then the black part is going to wrap slightly around to the outer side of the base, like so. And we're going to sit the, along the bottom of the piece and then we're going to attach the second piece. And that's how they're going to sit. As I said, I'm going to glue mine on. So I'll be plugging in my hot glue gun and letting that warm up for a little bit. Okay, I think we're good to go now. And then with the eyes glued on, we are finished. Probably a little bit too close to the camera there, but oh well. Thank you all for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back next week with a new pattern. See you all then.